Hey everyone, so I haven't really delved into the whole climate change or the climate alarmism story that, well, you know, it's been out and on center stage for quite some time now. And, you know, it's mostly being predominantly pushed by those who would be on the left side of the political aisle. And like I say, what I'm seeing as a reaction from the reactionary right, let's say, is to constantly put forth a completely or opposing narrative and suggest that the climate doesn't change at all in some way. Well, that's basically, you know, how the narrative has been set up in terms of those who are part and parcel of the media is the right-wingers or knuckle-draggers don't believe in any climate change and the left-wingers are out there desperately warning us that the earth is going to get a point of no return in less than 12 years and we should all be up in arms and panicking and causing mass hysteria to wake up those dumbed-down right-wingers who just refuse to accept the climate alarmist or the climate change narrative that the left presents. So to me, it's like, well, listen, here, here's what I would do in any scenario when you have two opposing sides that are both seemingly hysterical or so far away from each other that it seems like there's absolutely no possible way to ever find any semblance of agreement or where they'll come together and actually discuss the topic. Because that's what adults should be doing, right? Instead of running to your little perspective corner, throwing little temper tantrums, adults should have the wherewithal and the resolve to say, you know what, let's, let's put on our big boy and girl pants or skirts and let's meet at the table halfway. You sit on that side, I'll sit on that side, and we'll sit down and talk about these things. You bring your evidence to the forefront, and I'll bring my evidence. And rather than play politics, let's let the evidence speak for itself. But as you see, that is not how it's being portrayed or presented in the media, nor by those who are part and parcel of the ruling establishment. It's that kind of battle royale that if allowed to be played out entirely, well, nothing is genuinely going to change whether the sky is falling or not because hatred vitriol and the kind of politically divisive narratives that both sides are using well that's not conducive or a proper way to try to bring people together to try to resolve or find some way to resolve that dispute or at least to figure a good path going forward and as far as i'm concerned it shouldn't even be a single path forward that's the beauty of the free market of freedom of free individuals there can be a multitude a myriad of ways that we can confront climate change if it truly does end up being something that we need to be overly concerned with. But based on what I'm reading from respectable and reliable sources, as far as I'm concerned, a lot of that panic is being hyped up needlessly. And I'm gonna do what any good journalist should do, or at least anyone that's trying to properly inform or educate people. And I'm just gonna tell you what's being presented combined with the links because they're contained all within this article to the scientific field or the scientists or the studies the peer-reviewed studies as you'll find out and just go by the evidence if you truly care about climate change then get to the evidence stop listening to political pundits look at the evidence for yourself and draw your own conclusions and if you lack the confidence to do so then make sure you're at least getting opinions from people from varying perspectives and backgrounds. And do your best to weigh all the evidence properly. Absent politics. Headline on a FEE, the Foundation for Economic Education, Five Surprising Scientific Facts About Earth's Climate. There are many environmental facts that run contrary to popular belief. Here are five of them. This was uploaded Wednesday, September 4th, 2019. By VJ Jara, on the weekend of August 10th to 11th, as if in chorus, major online news websites call on people to stop consuming meat. The calls echoed a recent United Nations report that recommended doing so to fight climate change. It surprised many, but there are other more surprising facts about climate change that are hardly published in our everyday news media. Below are some facts scientifically recognized and published in peer-reviewed journals that may raise your eyebrows. One. Climate has always changed. Always. All proxy temperature data sets reveal that there have been cyclical changes in climate in the past 10,000 years. There is not a single climate scientist who denies this well-established fact. It doesn't matter what your position on the causes and magnitude and danger or not of current climate change is. You have to be on board on this one. Climate has always changed. And it has changed in both directions, hot and cold. Until at least the 17th century, all these changes occurred when almost all humans were hunters, gatherers, and farmers. 2. Temperature increase in the past was not caused by humans. 
Industrialization did not happen until the 17th century. Therefore, no prior changes in climate were driven by human emissions of carbon dioxide. In the last 2,000 years alone, global temperatures rose at least twice around the 1st and 10th centuries to levels very similar to today's and neither of those warm periods were caused by humans. Like I say folks, just to let you know, any of those highlighted areas in red on this article, if you do click on it and you do want to read some of those studies, every one of those highlighted areas in red is a link, it's a hyperlink to an article or to a study. Three, the Arctic and Antarctic are doing better than ever. Yes, you read that right. The 10,000 year Holocene paleoclimatology records reveal that both the Arctic and Antarctic are in some of the healthiest states. The only better period for the poles was the 17th century during the Little Ice Age when the ice mass levels were higher than today's. For the larger part of the past 10,000 years, the ice mass levels were lower than today's. Despite huge losses in recent decades, ice mass levels are at or near their historic highs. 4. Polar bears and other species are not dying but flourishing. If you paid attention to the previous fact, then the following one is not hard to understand. Polar bears, often used as a symbol of climate doomsday, are one of the key species in the Arctic. Contrary to the hype surrounding their extinction fear, the population numbers have actually increased in the past two decades. Last year, the Canadian government considered increasing polar bear killing quotas as their increase in numbers posed a threat to the Inuit communities living in the Nunavut area. The increase in population size flies in the face of those who continue to claim otherwise in the popular news media. And it is not just the polar bears in the Arctic. Other critical species elsewhere, like tigers, are also making a comeback. 5. Carbon dioxide is not a temperature control knob. While most of the current climatologists who collaborate with the United Nations believe anthropogenic CO2 emissions have exacerbated natural warming in recent decades, there is no empirical proof to support their claim. The only way to test it would be to wait and see if their assumptions come true. The entire climate fraternity was in for a surprise when global temperature between 2000 and 2016 failed to rise as anticipated by the climate alarmists. The scientists assumed that rising CO2 emissions from human activity would result in a rapid rise in temperature, but they didn't. This proved that atmospheric CO2 concentrations are not the primary factor controlling global temperature. Consideration of a much longer period, 10,000 or more years, suggests that CO2 had no significant role to play in temperature increases. CO2 never was the temperature control knob. These are some of the many climate facts that the media refuses to acknowledge, like the impending solar minimum that NASA has predicted for the next two solar cycles between 2021 and 2041, ushering in a period of global cooling like it did during the solar minimum of 17th century. There are other facts that run contrary to popular belief, such as there has been no increase in the frequency or intensity of floods, hurricanes, tornadoes, wildfires, droughts, and other extreme weather events. Even the UN's Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change reported low confidence that global warming, man-made or not, was driving increases in extreme weather events. The list is endless. It would be naive not to acknowledge this blatant and lopsided reporting in our news media. So I'll place a link to this article in the description of the video below. But like I say, folks, listen, I'm not a scientist and I've never played one on TV. But one thing I am someone is before I make an informed opinion, and really it should be an informed opinion, not just a baseless opinion, but before I come to anything that is remotely resembling an informed opinion on a particular area or a topic of discussion or subject matter, I personally take that role a personal responsibility so that I get myself up to speed with the proper information. Not just the political rhetoric or the propaganda espoused by those in the established media. That's another thing, folks. Listen, a lot of people, right? You know, there's a lot of money being swashed around and pushed around, trying to go into these different new green initiatives. And I get, listen, if it's done under voluntary or, or market-driven forces, hey, I'm all for it. But once again, if you're just forcefully redistributing from some areas of the economy, to prop up others, that to me that that's a wrong way, that's a wrong approach. And and for what reason? If you're going to use force, wealth, wealth, and income redistribution, well, it should not be right. At the very least, at the very minimum, it shouldn't be done under the pretense of alarmism that could very well be proven to be completely and abstractly incorrect, or a false assumption, and will never actually play 
I mean, think about all the times in the past where these alarmists, like I say, whether it was the, the ozone layer, deforestation, or any of the other myriad of alarmist approaches to ooh, how detrimental we humans are to the environment. Or even when you're talking about smogger pollution from emissions from vehicles. Once again, that is a, an area where there's there's multiple ways that you can do things when there is something that you want to shift people away from. You know, like I say, whether it's affecting the, the climate or the atmosphere or whatever it's affecting human people. You know, the water we drink. Listen, there's, there's a multitude of ways that you can try to deal with that kind of scenario or those potential problems that may arise. One is human innovation, creativity, and the free market and people's ability to use their minds and their intellectual capacity to figure out ways to affect these possible or potential threats to our environment. Listen, like I say, the proper way to do it is allow that free market to flourish, to allow a multitude of ways or methods to be implemented, implemented conjured up and constructed and put out there in real life to help deal with these kinds of scenarios. Like I say, that, the market is perfectly suited for doing that. Whereas government, government, it's always about a one-size-fits-all approach. Here, I'm going to plunder a whole lot of money from you, put it in the hands of a bunch of central planning bureaucrats, and they're the ones that are going to be the ultimate deciders and determiners in how that all unfolds and where that money gets redistributed to. No, like I say, rather than that one-size-fits-all approach, I'm saying, like I say, the market allows for every one of us to participate. And we can all do it on a voluntary basis rather than pointing guns at each other and forcefully redistributing large sums of income, which ultimately just picks winners or losers in the economy at the end of the day. And might very well never end up to do anything to truly affect climate change. So for those of you who are wondering, is Bennett ever going to do a video pertaining to climate change? Well, here it is. And hopefully this will help get you up to speed and thinking more critically about that issue. It's Canadian Libertarian, and I love liberty.